how to create hyper-realistic images with Midjourney. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? This video is a cooperation between Robomar, who is an absolute Midjourney legend. Follow him on Instagram for daily tips and tricks and me. So he gave me his amazing formula to make this happen. I did extensive testing with it and I'm going to show you my tips and tricks on top of that. Also, please use the link below this video to sign up for free to the NVIDIA conference because they say they will give a 3080 Ti to one of the people from my community, my channel, who sign up with this link. Also, don't forget about my stream on Sunday. We're going to do some control net stable diffusion testing. Let's get started here. So first, let me show you a normal mid journey image without the amazing formula from Robomar. This is just old lady. Here I have in this picture the ratio minus minus AR four by six and then also the version minus minus V four. I will leave that out for the rest of the video. You can see here the quality is good, but it's not amazing. It doesn't look super realistic. It is kind of blurry. It's kind of low detail and it looks like a digital painting. Now here we have the same thing, but with the formula. The formula is professional color grading, soft shadows, no contrast, clean, sharp focus, film photography. And by the way, watch the rest of the video because there's a lot more amazing things to come. Now, when you look at the image, you can directly see that there is a ton of difference. Now, this is a lot more detailed. It looks a lot more realistic. The light is better and all the materials feel better. This doesn't look anymore like a digital painting. Here we have both images side by side and you can see the massive difference this is making. Now, one thing I want to point out here, and this is really important, is look at the materials because what is very important for realism, for hyper realism, is the reflection and also refraction of light. And these are different based on the material, but also based on the material color. So when you look, for example, at the hair, you can see the reflection of the material of the hair is different than from the skin. In the skin, we have a special thing where the light is going through the skin and then it is going to be reflected from lower layers in your skin. So there's also a little bit of translucency here. And we can see that in the right photo, but not in the left photo, because the left photo is more like a digital painting. Also, when you look at the lower parts with the clothing, the materials feel different from the skin, from the hair. That is also very important. And we have none of that in the left image. Now let's talk about some basic advice here to give you good results right from the start. One thing is to keep the prompts short. And that means don't pack everything in there that comes to mind because that will confuse the AI, but it also will take away from what you actually want to achieve. The AI doesn't know what the priority of your image is going to be. The next thing, of course, that results from that is stay focused. So don't try out a million different things, try to achieve one simple thing, play around with the prompt, do some changes, but stay on the topic, stay focused on what you actually want to achieve, because this will lead to very fast and very good results. Next, I personally would suggest to you to start out with a ratio of two by three or three by two, because first of all, that is a ratio that works better with version four, but also this will from the start give you better results in a more interesting composition than the classic one by one ratio. But it is also not as challenging as higher ratios like 16 by 9 or 2 by 1. Next, of course, one thing to take into account here is if you want to achieve hyper realism, it has to be a realistic motive. So don't try to create other artistic styles. If you want to have something realistic, start off with something that is realistic and maybe also a subject that is often found on the internet because that makes it easier for the AI to give you results that look like an actual photo. Next, of course, real topics are kind of important because, again, the AI is trained on images found on the Internet. So if it's not real, the AI doesn't know what you want from it and it has to do more guesswork. And of course, it doesn't know what the materials look like, how the reflections are, how the light situations are in the shadows. So that makes it more complicated for the AI and the results will be less realistic as a result. Of course, if you're more advanced, you can do whatever you want. 
And this, of course, brings me to my next point. Don't confuse the AI. Stay simple, stay realistic, have a real topic and try to achieve something that is in near reach and then get more complex over time. And last but not least, this is kind of an important thing here. Try to think like a photographer. So if the result of the image isn't what you expect, Think about what would a photographer do in that situation. Like for example, the daylight situation or the lighting situation, the weather situation, lots of things can be changed. The camera angle, things like bokeh. So you want to research a little bit how is photography done and how is good photography achieved to help you write better prompts. So let's start here with something that is easy to achieve. In this case, you can see in orange what I added and then in blue the standard prompt. For this one, I'm going to read out everything. Futuristic woman with pink hair and blue eyes, award winning studio photography. Now here you can see that I'm staying very short, precise and to the point of what I want to achieve. After that, we have the formula from Robomar, professional color grading, soft shadows, no contrast, clean, sharp focus, film photography. Now, one thing to point out here is that you can see it says soft shadows, no contrast. But when you look at the image, you can see that that is not happening in the image. What Robomar told me is he's adding this to the formula of his prompt because, because often mid journey will create too dark, too harsh shadows and often too deep to extreme contrast. So by writing soft shadows and no contrast, you get a good looking result, but at the same time, still a good contrast, still very nice shadows. Now here in the second example, I'm only highlighting what I've changed. The rest of the prompt is exactly the same. In this case, I have changed the film photography to digital photography. And when we compare these two results here, you can see that the digital photography is a lot harder, not just from the light, but also from the details. It's cleaner, it's more precise, which is really interesting. And you should try out different formats, different mediums, even different brands or different cameras can be put in the prompt to achieve slightly different, but very interesting results. Next, we have here analog film photography. And again, when you compare the two images, here's again the digital image, you can see how hard, precise and sharp everything is. With the analog film photography, everything looks a little bit softer, a little bit vintage, a little bit more warm from the colors from the overall expression. And that is also something you expect from an analog film photo. Next, I added cinema film photography. And that can also be a very interesting thing because as you can see, Mid Journey tries to create a style that will reflect these kind of concepts. It's not always about the medium. It's also sometimes where the photography is going to be shown, where it's going to be used. And you can see that this is more expressive, has more of a character, is more glamour. Next, I tried magazine photography. And I find this really interesting because this did not just change the overall style. You can see everything here is fresh, stylish, young, expressive, a kind of photo you would put in a magazine or even on a cover. And it's just very eye catching. But also it changed the physique of the model here. The next photo here is glamour photography. And when you look at that photo, you can see how different that is from the magazine photography we had before. Again, here is the magazine photo. You can see this is wow and in the face and loud and eye catching and more aggressive. Now with the glamour, even the clothing, even how the hair is done, the soft light on the hair, everything about that photo is finer, softer, just well, more glamorous. Before we go on to another subject, I also want to show you a color sheet that is actually from Mid Journey in the wiki on their page. So here you have different colors, different terms you can use to achieve these colors. For example, here for different eye colors. Here we have materials for clothing. After that, we have materials for oceans, lakes, rivers, we have fantasy skin colors, which of course, if you want to create an elf or an orc, things like that could be super helpful. Of course, pause the video to look closer at the different suggestions and try them out in your prompts. 
Hyperrealism is of course not just interesting for portraits. So here we have an animal photography. In this case, we have a lion. Again, try to stay realistic. Try to have something that is usually photographed in the real world to start you off with hyperrealism. In this case, again, I have a very short starting prompt. Lion in nature, highly detailed fur. And then afterwards, I have the Robomar formula. Now I added here highly detailed fur so I get more structure in the fur because sometimes, especially in the upscaling, a little bit muddy, a little bit blurry, a little bit low detail. So this can help to get better results. Now again, think about where, why and how are photos used. In this case, I'm using National Geographic as a term in this image and look at how different that image is. So when we look at this image, you can see it's a good image of a line. It's very nice from the colors and overall just very expressive and beautiful. But National Geographic is known for their emotional expressive photos that tell a story and really bring you in as a viewer. So when you look at the face of this line here, you can see a little bit of thoughtfulness, maybe a little bit of sadness in the eyes. He's looking out over the savanna, and you have also a nice color story in here. His face is warm. You can see the way, the direction he's looking. There is warm light. There's maybe a sunset happening, but behind him, the light is blue. It is cold. So you have a difference between the foreground, the background, and this gives a movement, also an emotional movement here. So everything about this is just you want to know what does he think you feel as a part of his life. Next, I added GoPro to the prompt. And this is really interesting because not only is the GoPro an action cam, but of course it is used for action shots and it has a lens that is very wide angle, kind of a fish eye lens. And this is also reflected in the pictures. You can see here that the perspective is skewed. That is why the head of the line is so big and the snout is even bigger than it should be. But also the overall scenery is more action like you can feel like the line is going to move. He's smelling at the camera. There is some action going on and you were involved in that through the image. So again, this is a part of storytelling and also to think about how is a camera used? Where is a camera used? What kind of image do I want to achieve? And what kind of camera would I use for that? Think like a photographer to get these hyper realistic results. And of course, if you simulate real photographic techniques, you get something that looks like the real thing. Now, here's one more thing that I want to tell you about photos, especially for fur, but also overall. If your upscale doesn't have enough detail, isn't sharp enough, because Midjourney version 4 still has an upscaling problem, try to put in your prompt minus minus style 4B because there's actually different versions of 4 and I tried it out and for fur, 4B is working the best. And you can see here in this result, even though the upscale is still blurry, it has a lot more detail in there and the hair, the individual hair strands are more pronounced. Now let's move on to architecture photography because of course you can achieve hyperrealism in a lot of different areas. And here you can see I wrote at the beginning architectural photography to define that as a medium of a modern living room. Now in this case, the result is pretty amazing. I really like it. It's very expressive. It has a lot of range in there from the shadows to the bright areas. Everything is beautiful, but it is not an architectural photo because it is just too dark, too moody. Not what I want to have here. Now I tried to add at the end of my prompt HDR bright room. And that improved things and that actually looks pretty cool. And I can see this image being used in some magazines, especially ones that are a little bit more edgy and a little bit more expressive. But still, the shadows are too dark and everything is a little bit too extreme, too harsh. So here I have a solution for you. I added at the end of the prompt 
evenly lit bright room, but that wasn't enough. So I added a negative prompt, minus minus no dark shadows. And you can see the result here is pretty cool. This is something you can actually put on an architectural page because the room is nice, it is bright, it feels good, you want to be there, it's just a nice sunny day to have. And also the overall colors look very nice, professional and nicely white balanced. Next, let's talk a little bit about street photography. In this case, Japanese neon street at night. Really cool subject and it is very nice to look at. The result is kind of good, but it could be better. So here we are just using the Robomar formula and already we're getting pretty amazing results. But like I said, think like a photographer to try to improve these results. So when you look at that scenery, what would you change as a photographer? You can see here we have neon lights. How do neon lights look better? Of course, after rain, when there is puddles on the ground. So this is what I added here, wet street. And already this looks a lot more realistic because the reflections and the wet ground brings more for the AI to grip at, to create nice reflections, nice contrasts and surface details. And this overall brings out the hyper realism in that image. Another classic photography trick is of course to use bokeh in my image. Bokeh is the blurry parts in an image. And what that does is if you have blurriness somewhere in the image, the sharp parts look even sharper and you have a guidance of the focus where the eyes are going. Because of course you're not going to look at the blurry parts. So here I'm zoomed into that image and you can see that the foreground here looks a lot more interesting, more detailed, more sharp because the background is so blurry. Now, of course, again here I tried national geographic photography. And in this case, you can see even though it didn't make the image more realistic, it put more story into the image. Again, there's a very nice balance between the lights, between the warm and cool areas. But also I feel like this image has more details in it that create a certain story. Now I want to show you actually a variation of the Robomar prompt. So this is another thing he is doing. In that case, you can see here, of course, at the beginning it says be in a flower, but then the variation here is professional color grading, soft shadows, no contrast. But after that, F stop 1.2, depth of field, focus stacking, macro photography. Now what this achieves is it tells the AI about a specific f-stop you want to use to create this sharpness in the image. But then also through depth of field and focus stacking, we are having an image that is sharper throughout the image. So it's not just at a very small part. It is created through of course, in real life, multiple photos. So in that case, you would take maybe five photos, sometimes 10 or 15 photos and merge the sharp parts of that image together to create that focus stacking effect. Now, another alternative here is to use super macro photography. In this case, also at the start, I wrote B hat. So both of them help really well to zoom in even closer. Of course, one thing you have to take into consideration here is that Mid Journey doesn't really understand how a B hat looks like. So anatomically, these things are not really correct. And as a last thing for the tutorial today, I want to show you a really crazy thing you can do with AI. So here I added at the end a negative prompt, minus minus no blur, bokeh, DOF, depth of field. Now what this does, and I've never seen that in real life, is a macro photo that has no blur in there at all. Everything is sharp. The blossom is sharp. The bee is sharp. It looks so strange that even the AI has problems to create a image because it doesn't really know what you want from it. This is just very uncommon to have so much sharpness in a macro photo. But that you can do these things is absolutely mind blowing.
Before I go, I want to remind you to re-roll to change your prompt in tiny ways like individual words or even phrasings of individual words to see how you can improve your results. Let me know in the comments if I missed any amazing trick that I should have put in here. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.